back everybody welcome back to the canyon welcome back to another wheeling wednesday where again as you saw by the selection uh, well this means nothing to you so you, you we join a wheeling wednesday before it's even in progress because i was diligently toiling away at a quick view and reached a point where uh, we had gotten to some sort of nexus of failures. So I, I was like, oh God, not again. Because the process of the quick view is one that is fraught with dangers. Like, you either hope for really, really bad or really, really good. Because nobody cares about anything that's right in the middle, right? But at the same time, I also don't like to slash and bash a product until I give it the due diligence. So we got to a point in the one that, like, I don't know. It might end up in the members only. It might end up uh, going live. Uh, we'll find out. So I figured it's not too hot outside yet. Today is going to hit 90 degrees. So I figured when the quick view is not going well, the best approach is to look over here. Right over my shoulder is the whiteboard. And upon the whiteboard is scribbled things that, like, I just put off. That's, that's how they end up on the whiteboard. The whiteboard, the board of, not of ignorance, the board of ignoring. Like, I know what I should be doing, but I don't do it one way or the other. I've got parts that have been sitting around waiting to be installed in vehicles for weeks. I have bodies that still aren't painted. I've got, it just, it's a snowball effect, right? And uh, it, it comes out of that same thing. We don't want to buy the things that we have to buy. We only want to buy the things that we want to buy. So up at the top of the list was, was a gentleman, was this gentleman. Oh, I was in high. There we go. So I had remembered, oh. Got a little click and forward, but not in reverse. So it, I, I had recalled uh, his shocks were in a state. So I pulled him down off of his spot in the garage, pulled his shocks off. They were all at least half empty. This one right here had almost no oil in it at all. Uh, and yet had the cleanest spring cup of the others. In the fronts, it appeared that the lower cap had just screwed down and then the oil was leaking out. So I, I got a little bit of my friend. Everybody should have a, a tube of True Blue vibration resistant thread sealant with Teflon. It's basically Teflon paste with blue thread lock in it. So I put a little bit of that on the front caps in the hopes of keeping them from dialing out again. The back caps weren't that bad, but there was less oil in the back shocks than there were in the front. And while I had him down and had him apart, I kept thinking to myself, well, he, he remains the only radio that is an RTR radio, and, and, now, and now he's not. It's got graffiti on it, but it works. Like, it, it works great. Set all the endpoints. We get a two-speed. I could finally set my steering endpoints. It's great. So he's he's in the best shape that he's been in a while because it was I, I was I was getting to the point of a realization that Ironsides was turning into that he was turning into a commuter car where there's a pile of uh, old candy bar wrappers and 7-Eleven to go cups piled up in the footwell because we just drove him and put him away. Like, he wouldn't even get hit with the air if he got put away wet. His battery would be removed, and he went back into his bay in the garage, and that was it. So, and he did pretty well in the wheel and Wednesday of many weeks past. So I thought, I'll get to work on that. I'll take my mind off things. Oh, and uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention, there's a tiny little bit of an intercept from from the comments forgive me i do not remember who left the comment i saw it and then i went and tried to look for it and i could not remember it might have been in a daphne video 
Look at the amount of rust on these screws. I, uh, I, I couldn't find it. Someone said you can flip the C-hubs to give yourself more caster. And I thought, oh, well, I'll have to try that sometime. And then forgot about it and forgot about it and forgot about it. And then I was putting this guy back together. I had his front end opened up anyway because I had to wash my hands twice to work on this. Let's, let's put it this way. The, that thing, this guy was filthy. So I did indeed flip the C-hubs. And I wouldn't say that it gives you more caster. It just gives you caster because the way they were installed originally with the right on the right and the left on the left, they're basically straight up and down. There's almost no caster in the front end of a TRX-4 in stock configuration, and you just flip them around, and they just, it just, they just flip around. I, I didn't have to change link lengths. I didn't have to do anything. I took all the screws out. I flipped them around, which gave me an opportunity to clean up the knuckles and clean up all the stuff. And now with that amount of caster, I can uh, actually, I can dial out my front upper a little bit because I would like that pumpkin angle rotated forward just the tiniest bit. We have a very good driveline angle in the back. The front, that sticks out a little snaggy. And as you can see, his whole bottom is it's pretty rough. This guy and the Gate Rover are probably sooner than later going to require me to order some new fenders. We've got all every all four fenders have at least one screw completely torn out. But uh, he's being sent to Leviathan. We're being sent to Leviathan. I'm going to set up an umbrella. We're going to go out there and we're going to uh, we're going to hit some lines and we're going to talk about some stuff. And uh, that's what we do here on Wheel and Wednesday. Let me let me start by saying that we, and by we I mean I, uh, we I am are uh, fully cognizant of the fact that a what is that thing forty two sixty eight uh, eighth scale twenty three hundred and fifty kV eighth scale buggy motor it's too much for a TRX four, but at the same time it's TRX four. So it's the exact right amount for a TRX-4. <laughs> it's dumb. It's 20 plus miles an hour in second gear. It's a lot of weight. Oh, I had the diffs unlocked. It is, uh, it is delightfully stupid. It really is. He's got, he's got so much low weight with the big portals all the way around. And with a little bit of damping in there, uh, I can't imagine that that's, that's that it's going to hurt performance at all. Now, what is what he doesn't have is much in the way of approach angle. That bumper gets down into everything. We can dig a, we can diggy diggy hole. He's got he's got so much drive though. Defenders. Are great they, they just are they have so many things working against them that oftentimes overcoming those things is a big part of it I mean no one and if I'm offending anyone I I get close to apologizing but nobody should have just a garage full of cheater rigs that are all LCG'd out with 12 degree plus skid angles and bodies all chopped to the to the belt line like what's honestly what is the fun in that i i don't see the fun in that oh uh by the way we will give we will be getting some definite air traffic today uh it is the sound of jets and propellers something must be on fire or or the uh the firefighting planes are arriving for the season i don't know it's one it's one or the other So, not every rig, you shouldn't have an entire fleet of rigs that are all cheat codes. I don't want 10 Argentums. Argentum is awesome because he is what he is, and he still, he's not full cheat codes. He'd be full cheat codes if we put a cab on him, you know, put a creep cab on there, and then I don't have to tote around the one pound weight of a body. But then he's not a phoenix anymore. Just like this thing would be terrifying. 
with the amount of weight it has on it because it's had all this weight added to make up for, to accommodate, to offset that one kilo of Defender shell, complete to going to smaller tires, complete to adding it. He's got over a pound of brass. Oh, he's got well over a pound of brass. He's probably got close to two pounds of brass, actually. Because otherwise, you'd get to right here and he would tip over. And he still might. Let's get that rear end over this little, over this little prong here. There we go. The power of the portal you do have to kind of side breach onto everything. But again, he's so long and he's so heavy and you can just come out here and just, just drive him around. Let's see if, let's see if we can get a tumble out of him though. Just wants to be on fours all the time. That's that's his thing. I think I've got a shady spot. Yeah, let's yeah, like right there. That's some some downright cliff holding right there. And as I was doing his far overdue maintenance, I was noticing. Like, he's got a bunch of added brass. He's got portal weights all the way around. He has to. He's running a big body. But, like, all the other stuff, link mounts, links, shocks, shock towers, chassis, gearbox, everything else is just stock bits. He's had one micro servo replaced because he burned up his two-speed. And then other than that, everything just keeps going. And while they are, while they are certainly not phenomenal pieces of technology... I can't complain too loudly about the 2065s being used for diff lockers because they're still alive and almost to the point of amazingly so because I had to dial the endpoints on channels five and six on this GT5 back so far. It's like 50% one direction, 60% the other. And those things have survived coming up on two years with no endpoint adjustment. So they were just pressing against the spring of a servo saver every time this thing had power from a battery. So is the 2065 a servo I'd recommend you buy? No. Is it amazing that they have survived this long? Yes, I'm nodding yes. I mean, gone, sure, gone are the glory days. Where your Traxxas servo would burn out and you would contact support. They would ask you for your address and they would send you a new servo. Uh, now it's like replacement. Like, you, you, I will only charge you $13 instead of 20 for a servo that's worth two. You know, uh, nothing good lasts. How does it go? Something like that. Well, I, w I was going to say we'll drive out of frame, but we'll, instead we'll just we'll pan around. I have not spent a lot of time recently at Leviathan. I don't know what it is. I like the, the gully that he just drove up, but something else about Leviathan needs some work because we've definitely found that at the canyon, uh, if an obstacle isn't... I, I go here. I go here a lot. Uh, if an obstacle is not sparking joy, we tend to just avoid it and go somewhere else. So I don't, I don't exactly know what it is. Leviathan has been rebuilt twice now. And uh, I guess the formula just isn't right. And it shouldn't surprise me. Uh, Drybone Valley has been rebuilt like four times. And Undertaker is on an iteration so high, I, I don't even know what it is. Because these were the early guys. This was one of the first obstacles. Uh, it went Anomaly. And then Leviathan. This, these were the first two that were built once I got out of the original section. So, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm doing. 
I say, if we can if we can navigate back up here into the into the canyon, the little canyon section. We can take a look here. Like I'm really happy. The section that he's in right now, I'm really happy with this part. I've always liked this little section he's coming up to right here. This is a chunk of uh, the curb right where it, it would dip for where like the ramp is at an intersection. So that, that block of concrete is just so big and thick and perfectly shaped. It just basically got dropped into that spot and set there. And it's kind of obnoxious to get over unless, you know, you've driven through here. Uh, 10,000 times, then you, you kind of know your way around. One of the, this was, I guess, technically, this would be the first canyon I built, not, not anything on par with the slots over here, just out of frame to our right, but, you know, we learn as we go, as I've said, and I at least like to think that every time I build an obstacle, I get I get a little better at it. I'm I'm happy with this rebuild here, uh, despite the fact that he's driving through a dry lake, and that's it's, there's not slab under where he is. There's a little bit of mortar mix, and and I made sure to leave some 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 areas for seepage, some weep holes, I guess. But uh, when the water puddles up in there, it takes like two days for the water to dry it out. So. I, I guess this is part of the reason the canyon is gradually transitioning away from open cell foams because I, I don't want to have to deal with it, you know? Just gonna bust a U over there. Come back this way, try 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 skirting this high side up here. I, I love the look of a lot of this section out here. The this was the first part where I did I did wash, where you know concrete has this very bland grayness to it and as I look around I realize that most of the the canyon has a sort of bland tanness to it but I'm getting better I'm getting better and uh this was where I just put everything down with straight quickrete is how the uh, all the put down was before I, this was pre-canyon blend here so I put everything down with concrete and then just mixed up mortar mix super thin and spread it with a broom and it, it does give it a nice uniform texture to it there's a lot of grip uh so much grip in fact that let me let me re let me reorganize here so this little line that we're going to cut up right here this used to be really difficult to do you get in through here and then you had to you had to wedge yourself across that and it was really difficult to pull your rear end up over that it would just slide and slip because as you can see that little triangle rock right behind the right behind driver rear it's pretty vertical but uh, it, didn't, it doesn't matter anymore. There's so much grip out here. I don't think the non-returns recently to Leviathan are due to too much grip. We love grip. And the, I, I think what it is, is Leviathan, more than other sections, I think, like the slot canyons are divided into the slots. I think Leviathan is kind of a rock garden so you can just kind of go wherever you want. So in terms of obstacle construction, I think I did, I think I did pretty well here because it, once you start grabbing markers and setting up lines, you have you have so many options. <laughs> you have so many options of where you can go and what lines to hit because it's almost like there's unlimited lines here. So comp wise. Uh, and I'm putting this out in the universe so that the wheels can listen in and hear me. Uh, comp wise, this is the section that you wanted to pick for a verse for a heads up for a, a six gate or a six line, because there's so there's so many lines. As I look down here, there are so many lines. And in other obstacles, I guess I have not been as successful because, well, let's take Undertaker for example. There's half a dozen. There's like six or seven lines there. And what I really need to do is I need to get all introspective like this. And I need to look at an obstacle uh, super group and I need to go, where do we not drive? If we don't drive there, work on that line. That's, that's exactly what I did to Dry Bone Valley. And now Dry Bone Valley is like 10 or 12 lines in a pretty small section. 
Leviathan is big. It's 30 feet long. Uh, widest point, probably, well, widest point would go from right over there to, can we even get it all in one frame? Just barely. So you're talking like, like how big is that relative to a TRX-4? It's pretty big. So we've got a lot of lines out here and there aren't any sections really that, oh, maybe is, okay. As we delve further into introspection, is it because I think Leviathan might actually be done? Is that why I'm not wheeling here? Do I tend to gravitate more towards obstacles that I consider incomplete? Or more likely, there are certain obstacles that are testers. Slick Rock is a test facility because it, the surface is consistent and I know what it's going to tell me. And it's going to tell me the things that I don't know but I need to know. So out here, this is a this is a rock garden. This is a comp section. So I don't use it very often because, well, the wheels haven't told me to pick a comp line. Uh, OG followers of the channel will recognize that six eighths and six lines are are increasingly few and far between. Uh, for a number of reasons, primarily among those being that the of the production involved to make them, it takes a long time. It takes several hours to film, to get all the footage of a 686 line. Six lines are a little better. I've gotten that a little more refined, but still, they are in that four to one, five to one area. So if a video is 30 minutes long, it took two to two and a half hours to film it. And then there's the editing, which is even more. So it's generally, it's a full day. Why I appreciate Wheel and Wednesday is I come out here and I do this. And Wheel and Wednesdays, I shoot for that, you know, 30, 35 minutes, sometimes shorter, sometimes longer, uh, depending on how much I've rambled on about what. And the editing takes, and then that's it. I don't have to put anything away. I will leave the umbrella where it's standing over there. You can see his little shadow over here. Uh, I will take it in, put it, put it, put it in the editing suite and it will take a 40 minute video. will take 45, 50 minutes to edit and then it goes up. So, I mean, we're getting really into the, into the back end here, which is, these are all things that I take into consideration. I enjoy making the videos. Making the videos for me is as much fun as building the rigs, as wheeling the rigs, as building the course, as doing all the stuff, right? It's all part of one big ball of great, okay? Everything is not awesome, but it is a big ball of at least great. Sometimes it's a little hot. I'm sweating right now in the direct sun, and it is only about 80. We've got another 10 degrees to put on today. Uh, my body has still not acclimated to desert hot yet. And it's supposed to rain tomorrow. It is supposed to rain on Thursday. So uh, I guess what we got is, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call it climate shift. I'll call it what it is. Apparently I live in the Midwest now where sometimes it gets humid and it, and it rains. It rains 17 plus inches of rain for the year. Last year we got six. But it's helping. It looks nice out here. It also, it helps set the sand and set the dirt in. It makes it more uh, cost effective to set in obstacles when we get a wet winter and a wet spring. But we're already, we're, we're beginning that march towards the brutality of summer, the malevolent heat orb, where when I come out here to film a wheel on Wednesday, I am out here at six o'clock in the morning because if you don't film before eight or after seven, uh, it's just too hot for humans. And as you will recall from last year and a little bit the year before that, uh, it doesn't matter. I'll be out here when it's 115. And uh, as a guy that makes like 40 minute videos, uh, being out here when it's 115 is not super conducive to the production of a 30 minute video because the cameras can't handle it. The rigs can't handle it. Nothing. I can't handle it. Uh, I tend to stick to Drybone Valley because it was a place with shade. And as I, as I gaze over there now, as I look there now, you look right here and right there used to be a tree and I had to cut it down. And now 
look at how small the area of shade is over there. So my shade comes from, you know, we're going to have to get up under here and up under there where shade still exists. So I have to complete the obstacles at Roots Remain. I have to get anomaly or whatever the section behind anomaly gets. I've just been calling it backside of anomaly. Stuff like that needs to get finished. When, what do I do when the weather is nice? I toil away on obstacles that are out in the open that I can't use when it's blisteringly hot. Well, I mean, I can, but we'll get to a point where at eight, nine o'clock at night, the temperature of the rock is still 115, 120 degrees. There's a certain window that tires like to perform on, and it is not when it's 30 degrees, and it is not when it's 110 either. They, uh, they're like people, they kind of like to operate in a happy medium. So, I mean, what a, what a, but what a day. What a lovely day. He's definitely got some squeaks. He's got, he's got some squeaks. I don't know what the squeaks are. Uh, it's probably time for another hit. I think he's due for a, uh, a hit of dry slide. And uh, when I say, uh, see, we like to come full circle. You never saw it coming. We like to come full circle. You'll hear. Oh, and also, as I was driving out here, it occurred to me, I should have put the two speed on this because then I could be like, that's low and that's high. Instead, I put it on this. I don't know. I have to give it a little bit of throttle to tell what gear I'm in. And can you tell what gear I'm in? Like watch, watch the approach speed. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of rigs in the fleet that will do this. <laughs> and, and to the point, like, controllably like he's not just he's not just doing brodies it's like you can power slide this i i often do wonder how they drift in tokyo but uh i know i know that of the the members of the canyon fleet iron sides i think inarguably the fastest maybe not the most furious but whoop oh okay i'm gonna try something now we're, we're just Oh, come on. He's so heavy. All right, let's let's unlock him. Oh yeah, peg legging. Oh, he, it's so much harder to like. Like you're definitely not gonna lift a corner, but <laughs> it's fun. Okay, now what if we lock the rear? So now, now we're acting more like a, now we're, we're Mustanging now. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's much, that's much better. More hoony. So you know what? What a, what a fine, fine day. I hope you're all having a fine, fine day. I am, uh, my brain, this helped clear the uh the, the thought webs the thought cobwebs of the thinking about the quick view that's still failing in the back of my head and this this did help clear a good bit of it out i'm not i'm not thinking about it as much so wheel and wednesday worked for me i hope it worked for you i do invite you to comment below i also invite you to drop a like if you liked it subscribe if you haven't do consider channel membership Come back for whatever's next. Uh, I don't, I already don't remember what's tomorrow. I th it's a quick view of something. It's not the failed quick view. It's a quick view that's already done. That will be up tomorrow. And I also, it occurred to me that I operate on YouTube almost episodically, where like I make references to time and days, which is nonsensical in the grand scheme because time doesn't exist on YouTube. You can watch a video at two o'clock in the morning on whatever day of the year. It makes no difference to anyone when it was posted or what became before it and what came after it. Because once they're all uploaded, you could watch a video that I uploaded two years ago. I still get comments on videos from two years ago where they ask me a question and, and my head is like, well, I've done five more videos on that. But then the, of the smart part of my brain, the one that is dormant most of the time, it's like, yeah, but they don't know that. 
like just give them the link to the new one. I'm like, oh, okay. Thanks, smart brain. Listen to your smart brain more. Mine, like I say, mine sleeps a lot. He just lets dumb brain do things like put an eighth scale buggy motor in a TRX-4. And then, I mean, at the end of the day, smart brain is kind of into it. So it's a problem. I thank you again for the final time for watching everybody. I, I bid you adieu for today. I hope to see you tomorrow and the day after and the day after. We don't know how to stop uploading. I think is, is, think is what it comes down to. I have no idea. Uh, there have been videos and including member content. I've done three videos a day, a couple days here, and uh, I, need to, I need to stop doing that. I, for, for the sake of sanity, for the sake of everyone's sanity, I, need to, I need, really need to dial that back. But I don't know how, and we'll figure it out. So, In between now and when we meet again, please, everyone, do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. We will, we will catch you next time. I was trying to think of how cinematically to, how to exit, and I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll head back out this way. We'll line it up, okay, and I'll be like, tune in next time for whatever comes. It's gonna be good. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you soon.